Hello, good morning, Southwest Georgia, and welcome into Fox 31's The Blitz. I'm Andrew Snicker, taking over for the rest of the show to give you all the sights and sounds of Southwest Georgia high school football. Well, we're down to the final two weeks of the regular season, meaning plenty of the region titles are up for grabs. For some winners tonight, all the hard work will result in some hardware. Colquitt County and Coffee are two teams aiming at a title, fighting for the Region 1 5A crown, and that's where we're going to start tonight in Douglas for our Jeannie K. Tupper Game of the Week. Now, Coffee holds the key tonight with a win. The Trojans will be 3-1 and one in the region. They, they would hold the tiebreaker over Colquitt County. The Packers, well, they have rolled through their first two region games, and it was a struggle early on. Pa this is Packers quarterback Cole Seagroves hitting Ty Flourneau Smith for a first down. Now Packers Charmaine Washington, he would bust a big run for a first down. However, Packers can't get on the board. It's, or actually, they get a field goal out of it from Oscar Luna, getting the score to 3-0 to zero early on in the first quarter. However, the Trojans, well, they would respond. Eight minutes left. Keegan McGovern on an end around for a first down gets inside the Packer 10-yard line. And hey, they're in business right there. Still, Trojans drive would stall, and they would end up kicking a 22-yard field goal to tie the game at three. Really, that does not give the entire story. The Packers ended up rolling throughout this one, and Colquitt County is close to their first seed in the 5A Region 1. They win this one 38-14. The team will be traveling to Valdosta next Friday. Now on the opposite end of the Region 1 5A spectrum, Tiff County and Lowndes battling for survival tonight. Winner earning a spot in the playoffs from Brody Field. This is a Lowndes up 7-0, and Mike Moore gets a first down run for Lowndes. That's the stud running back for Lowndes. Moore again with a first down run inside Tiff County territory. And then quarterback Lance Jarrell hits Nicholas Bergman with a pass. Pat, and Bergman breaks a tackle, and he would take it in for six yard, or six and a touchdown. He didn't score to 14-0. Now the kickoff upcoming for Tiff County was returned by Drew Davis. He would end up fumbling the ball on that kickoff return. And of course, what do you expect? The fumble would be recovered by Lowndes County. And they would end up setting up a 40-yard field goal attempt. It was missed badly. However, the score gets better for Lowndes County. They win 21-0. And now they're in the playoffs. Well, Caro survived a scare last week against Westover to maintain their top spot in Region 1 AAA. The Cert Makers are aiming at back-to-back -back region titles, and first things first, the team needs a win tonight against Crisp County. Caro back home this week against the number two team in the region, Cougars. Crisp with a 3-1 region record could steal the top spot away from Cairo with a win tonight from West Thomas Stadium. 12 seconds left in the first quarter. Cairo third and four at the seven yard line and they cannot punch it in. In the red zone, not able to score. Beginning the second, Cairo just yards. Hand off to Drake Robertson. He would run for the touchdown, giving Cairo a 10 to zero lead. Took him quite a while to get him down as well. Now next play, Cairo watching Landon Whitman. And this time, he would end up going to the left, pick up a few more yards, but Chris was not able to score in that first half, and that's the play right here. Landon Whitman trying to get in, but he did not score. 10-0, Carroll led at the half, and it goes final. Carroll wins this one 24-0. Important region test left on the schedule next week for Cairo against America's Sumter. More from AAA tonight, Monroe and Doherty playing at Hugh Mills Stadium. The Tornado still clinging to a slim outside chance of reaching the playoffs, but the team must win out. Doherty with the ball here first, a little bit of a changeup at quarterback. Alfred Brown running a little bit of a wildcat, eating up some yardage, getting down into Monroe territory. However, the drive would stall, and Monroe would get their chance as well. Third and 11, this is Monroe's quarterback, Charles Strafford, under pressure, bouncing off tacklers. He gets 17 yards, and hey, that was good enough for the first down. Now, same drive, we're moving on to the second quarter from the five yard line. Strafford hitting Keontae Franklin just out of the reach of the Doherty defenders. Comes up with the touchdown, making the score seven to zero. Monroe takes the lead. Now, next possession, Strafford hitting Devontis Tavis Campbell for another touchdown. That one was a deep one. And Monroe, they roll in this one. Final score, 29 to 14. Doherty done for the season. Monroe plays Westover, that's a big one, next week. In the GISA, the Westwood Wildcats have been dominant in a current 23-game winning streak. The Wildcats have already won a region and state title during that span. Now the team could win their second region championship tonight. While that second state title, well, they hope that comes a little bit later this year. 
Wildcats hosting Terrell Academy tonight for Region 2 of the GISA Single A. Terrell's 4-0 in the region. Hoping to pull off a surprise tonight, but West, Westwood, they weren't allowing much. This is Charlie Maxwell getting intercepted by Westwood's Chase and Worsham for a, getting down to the five-yard line, setting up this very next play for Westwood. This is JT Adore, the big man, bouncing off some tacklers and getting into the end zone, giving Westwood a 7-0 lead, and they kept piling on from there. JT Adore, again, he would score multiple touchdowns. This one was a beautiful run. He jukes out some of the Terrell Academy defenders and gets into the end zone. Final score from Centennial Stadium in Camilla. Westwood wins this one 54 to seven. Sure, Christian at home tonight against Tift area. Rough seasons for both groups. The Eagles one and seven this year. Tift area, well they were even worse. Still searching for their first win. However, they were sure it was the one struggling. Dalton Todd gets the interception or gets picked off by Daniel Hardy. A little bit of a jump pass didn't work too well for Dalton Todd. Now second quarter, two plays later, it's 20 to 13 Tift area and quarterback Zach Mangelsdorf rolling out to find Peyton Mann. That was good down to the 12 yard line. That's a 20 plus yard reception for Tift area. Now on the two yard line, Matthew Turner pounds it in for the score. 27 to 13 Tift area at the half with a surprising lead. Now in the third quarter, nice play to open it up. This is Sherwood's Todd with a deep ball hitting Aaron Anthony. It was quite a crazy second half at the SCA Complex. Final score, Tift area gets their first win of the season, winning 42 to 40. Sherwood will finish their first season under head coach Otis Covington next week at Westfield. Well, coming up next, Westover Americas try to clear up the AAA playoff picture. Plus, Lee County, well, they were hosting Bainbridge back at Trojan Field. Stay tuned for more from the Blitz. And welcome back. Well, aside from Cairo, Region 1 AAA has been a round robin of teams beating up on each other. Tonight, some of that confusion could be settled with Westover traveling to America Sumter. Panthers hosting Westover at Finkley Robinson Stadium tonight. Patriots 2-2 two two in the region, while Americus, they were sitting at 3-1 to head into this important Region 1 AAA contest. Well, the Panthers, they get on the board first. This is quarterback Bryce Benton hitting Christian Laster. Fighting off the tackle for the touchdown. Two-point conversion for Americus as well. 8-0, Americus gets the lead. Now, second quarter, Patriots offense on the move. This is quarterback TJ Cromer. Finding Jamal Childs for the long gain, and then TJ Wester, the other quarterback, well, he takes it in for the Patriots' first touchdown. Yep. The Westover Patriots would go for a two-point conversion as well. That was no good, 8-6. to six. America's on top. Now, Patriots again at the Panthers' goal line, and TJ Cromer calls his own number. He takes it in, gets the touchdown to get the score to 12-8 to eight Patriots, and they just cannot hold on from there. America's Sumter able to eke out a close one. Final score, 14-12 to 12 from America's. Region 1 Quad A, Lee County back at Trojan Field after three straight road losses. Trojan defense, well, they've given up 48 points a game during that tough losing streak. Tonight, Lee hosting Bainbridge, and it was homecoming. Cats punting in the second quarter. Pedro Cruz blocks the kick, and then Paul Sarter, he would end up kicking the ball into the end zone, and hey, Lee County falls on it for a touchdown. An extra point was good, and the Lee County Trojans take the lead 27 to 26. Now it's 34 to 26. Trojans on top starting the second half, third quarter. Trojans first possession, and Brandon Patton almost makes a magnificent circus catch. He cannot come up with it, but they're still holding on to an eight point lead until this point on the blocked punt. Dontavius Bachman for Bainbridge blocks it, and he returns it for the touchdown. There was a flag at the end for a celebration extra celebration, but the extra point was good. And the Trojans were only ahead by 34-33. They were actually down in this game by quite a bit, but they come back and win. Final score, 60-41. to Lee County wins it. The Trojans will close out the season at home next week against Warner Robins. All right, it's time for our Plays of the Week, brought to you by the Albany Arthritis and Orthopedic Center. Play one, let's start in Camilla with Westwood. JT Adore with a great touchdown run, faking out with some of his own players even for that touchdown. He gets a little bit up and close with the touchdown, but it still works. Now play two, we're headed to Lee County. It's kind of a not top 10 play if you're Bainbridge. The Cats punt and it gets kicked into the end zone. Pedro Cruz blocks it and the ball is picked up for a Lee County touchdown. And hey, 
That must be good enough for the win. They end up winning 60 to 41 in that one. Now for these plays, you can get online at the Blitz page of MySouthwestGA.com and vote for your favorite play of Week 11. Or, hey, if you have a better play, why don't you tweet me at Schnitt. The high school football season has flown by and we are down to one final Friday of the regular season. Find out the options for the Week 12 Game of the Week next on the Blitz. And welcome back to the Blitz. Only one more week remains in the regular season. Week 12 will finalize the playoff spots throughout Southwest Georgia. So let's take a look at some of those important matchups coming next week. Now these are your options for that final week. All the playoff battles will be settled by this time next Friday. Westover will be looking to clinch a spot as well as those Cook Hornets. And of course, Cockle County, they're traveling to Valdosta in Region 1-5A. That'll always be a good one. Now you can vote for the game of the week on our website, mysouthwestga.com. Just click on the Blitz tab and make your pick from these options. All right, it's a Halloween weekend, so there's got to be a great standout Albany Technical College Fan of the Week. And hey, I think we've got it. It was a pink out and coffee. There's a pink game, they're calling it, and this is called the Pink Game. Uh, all dressed up in pink, all painted out. Congratulations, Coffee County, or coffee County Trojans, for becoming the Pink Game and our Albany Technical College Fan of the Week. Hey, remember to get connected at MySouthwestGA.com for all your news and weather and click on that Blitz tab for your high school football fix. Also, why don't you come see Romney, Weatherman Mike, and myself tomorrow morning at Chihaw Park's Q for Kids. Proceeds benefiting the local Strive to Thrive chapter, among others. Football and barbecue, you can't beat it. Well, that's all the time we have on the show tonight. For all the gang involved in this one, thanks for watching The Blitz. Now stay tuned for Excused. <laughs>